Hey all, Alex here at your home of the Music Deep Dive, and today it is time for a review of the 2021 biography by Fiona Sampson, Two-Way Mirror, The Life of Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Uh, Fiona Sampson, British writer, uh, initially a musician, she studied the violin and gained actually some reputation as a performer before uh, sort of merging that career path with uh, her other field of study, which is poetry. She uh, became a professor at the University of Roehampton and has published a mass of books both containing poetry and regarding poetry, often in that process linking it to music. Um, and even writing several libretti, actually, during her career. She's also uh, researched the history of the uh, Romantics in poetry, um, and before writing this book on Browning, she had written, um, she edited a, a book on Percy Shelley, and she wrote another biography of uh, Mary Shelley as well. Elizabeth Barrett Browning uh, probably would be fair to call her perhaps the definitive poet of the Victorian era, uh, born into a wealthy family in uh, County Durham in England. She wrote poetry from an early age and really kind of dove herself into that world after she moved to London. Uh, she had ill health uh, from a very early age, um, so she oftentimes uh, had difficulties even kind of getting out of bed, and so because of that, uh, she was sort of limited in what she was able to do consistently, so she was able to focus on poetry um, and really kind of honing her skills in that area. A uh, cousin of hers helped uh, get her poetry um, into the so-called cultural mainstream in London, um, started introducing Elizabeth to different people, and she rapidly became one of England's most famous poets because of that. Her works really delving into a lot of themes, most famously kind of spirituality, uh, romance, and especially later on in her career, uh, politics as well. Uh, additionally, Elizabeth's relationship with Robert Browning um, is very important to talk about. Of course, this book talks about it a lot. It is one of the most famed literary relationships of all time, in part because of the literature that spawned from it, specifically from Elizabeth herself. Some of her most famous poetry is connected to this. And the two of them would live in Italy for the final years of Elizabeth's life and become very active in the uh, political scene over there. Now, <clears throat> the first thing I will say about this book is if you were looking for analysis of Browning's poetry and looking for in-depth discussion of what her writings contain. Um, this is not the place to go. I think Sampson assumes some sort of familiarity already with uh, Browning's material, which is fair enough, obviously. Um, but yeah, she does not really take the time to really talk about these, um, about her poetry, about her uh, works of prose or anything like that. And I think some of that is also a stylistic decision because this book has a very unique uh, stylistic character to it. Um, the entire book is narrated in present tense. And I think that is an interesting choice. And it was not one that I was on board with at first. Um, because it does... It, it jars from the expectation, I suppose. Um, but if you can get past that... Um, then I think you will come to the same conclusion that I eventually did, which is that I do kind of appreciate that decision. One, just for its creativity. It is doing something different. But I think it also gives this narrative a sense of motion, of constant motion, that I don't see in a lot of other biographies. Um, it really feels like you were living these experiences through Elizabeth's eyes because these are very, well, again, I think the tense makes these experiences more immediate, like they are actively happening rather than things that uh, happened in the past. And that just shift in perspective, I think, makes everything kind of more vibrant and pop out. And I really uh, appreciate that. I also appreciate how... Um, Browning's work is kind of placed in a wider cultural context. Um, 
which is really the focus of it. Again, it's not, you know, Samson is not especially interested in getting into the nitty gritty of her poetry. She does not really spend any time doing that, but she wants to place emphasis on the figure of Browning and how she interacts with the general culture around her and in a way kind of emphasizing what made her different than a lot of other people. And this can be a good or a bad thing. This is not a fawning biography. I think the one interesting thing that Samson grapples with here is that Browning was a lifelong, abol not a lifelong abolitionist, um, but an abolitionist for much of her later years and a very fervent supporter of that cause while her family's wealth was built on literally centuries of slave labor and Browning never really acknowledged that and in fact there's writings from her childhood where she even justifies that and excuses it um <clears throat> again childhood writings that's that's one thing right but it is an interesting kind of balance that is important to talk about when you were reckoning with um, her activism. Uh, and I think that's interesting. And I think also just in general, Samson really wants to drive home the point that um, Browning is both in a sort of, dare I say the word icon for the um, disabled community, I suppose. Um, but also that she was not someone who was really defined by that because she, and maybe that's the point, because she um, very much built her own career in a lot of ways. Like, she worked her ass off within the limitations that she had because of her chronic ill health and, you know, studied poetry and wrote constantly and really refined her craft and the whole point that Samson is trying to make is that Browning is the definition of a self-made woman and to be able to do that in with again the kind of considerations that you have to take into account here is pretty remarkable it's pretty extraordinary and it gives an extra level of depth to a poet and to a writer who I think um, in the time that has passed since the Victorian era has been, I don't know, has, has been relegated to a little bit of a relic, I suppose. I think it is easy for people who have not spent a whole lot of time in this world, I'm not saying that I have, but people who have spent a lot of time, who have not spent a lot of time in this world, to lump a lot of romantic poets together as these kind of um, aristocratic idealists, I suppose. And I'm not saying that's entirely untrue either, but um, the depth that you see here and how real um, and, again, flawed um, Elizabeth Barrett Browning comes out in this narrative, I think, is really fascinating. Um, and, it's, and it's really cool as well to read about the acclaim that she received during her lifetime, the fact that after the death of William Wordsworth, I mean, keep in mind, she overlapped with Wordsworth, who was like um, decades older than her, um, after Wordsworth died, that she um, was heavily considered for the role of Poet Laureate in uh, England and ended up losing that to Tennyson. Uh, you know, she was someone who was very acclaimed during her life, too. And I think that is also a sort of a refreshing thing. And I think now, you know, 150 odd years after her death, I think it is um, fair and important to kind of re-examine her the way this book challenges us to as someone who, um, in a way, even despite whatever flaws she might have, I think embodies values and embodies things that impress us today um, and makes it seem even more impressive, the fact that she lived through them about um, almost two centuries ago. So, excellent book, excellent book. Again, it's not... Um, something where if you want to find insights about her actual poetry, you should probably look elsewhere. This is about Elizabeth Barrett Browning, the figure, the human. Um, and I think in chronicling that and doing it in a pretty radically different way, uh, I think this succeeds pretty much with flying colors. So 
uh, check it out. One of the uh, literary biographies I've read so far that I would most heartily recommend, I think. So check it out. With that, thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Uh, hit that bell for notifications and tell a friend as well. Thanks so much, and I will see you next time right here at your home of the Music Deep Dive.